Did anyone notice anything different in here this morning? No? Okay. Some... What's that? Warmer. It's warmer? Okay. Uh, the chairs? You notice the chairs? What color do you think they are? I thought they looked blue. I thought they looked blue. No, they're blue. <laughs> Charcoal. Do you notice they're a little harder? Some of, you know, that's intentional. Some of you are getting a little drowsy during sermon time, so I, I voted for metal chairs, no backs. Uh, I got voted down, so we got these. Uh, you know, maybe they'll break in. I hope that actually they harden. They sort of petrify uh, o- over time. Of course, I'm not sitting in them very long. I, I'm up here. But, you know, part of it, you know, thanks for those that back in uh, November... Uh, gave to our harvest offering, and that's what it came to. Some of you are wondering, are we ever going to really get the chairs we paid for? And here they are. So, so in, enjoy. Hopefully they'll last a long, long time, and we can enjoy those. But uh, the last four Sundays prior to, to last week, I, I just talked about this whole aspect of discipleship and that there are four phases or four quadrants in, in the picture of how we do discipleship here. It's important for, I think, every church to have some sort of uh, discipleship system. Or what is our discipleship plan? Are we actually working the plan? And, and if churches would just pay attention to that, uh, instead of having to go out and do uh, all kinds of fancy things or uh, glitzy sorts of stuff, attention getting, be- because discipleship doesn't get initially a lot of attention. It's, uh, but it's intentional and it's so important. And I-, I think because sometimes you don't see immediate results that it's sort of, well, let's, let's go do something else. Let's, let's get to it right now. But even Christ didn't get immediate results through discipleship. So why should we? So anyway, we have this four section uh, system of how we do discipleship. The, the big thing is you ought to be, be able to answer who's discipling me or who am I discipling? Or maybe you're doing both. I am being discipled by and I am discipling. And if you can't answer those, I say, well, you know, get, get on board here. We ought to be able to answer that. I am being discipled by, it could be one person, it could be a, a small group of people. And also, once you're discipled, the issue is now I should be discipling. I know it's easy. Some people go, I'm not going to do that. Or I don't have the gift. It's not a gifted thing. Discipleship is not a spiritual gift that some have and others don't. It's just a willingness issue. Some say, well, I can't teach. Discipleship is not primarily about teaching or I can't lead. It's not all about leadership. It's, it's about discipleship. It's, it's a different issue. And so whatever gifts you have, you can use those in, in discipleship. So, uh, you know, just understanding it's not just come and, and, and listen and uh, become more knowledgeable. These things are important. You know, I'm always glad that you guys are here, especially on a Sunday like this. You know, it would have been so easy, wouldn't it? It would have been so easy. Well, we're not going today. Not that some people shouldn't be here. There are some that... You know, their cars, they shouldn't be out there. They're lousy drivers. You know, should, they, on a good day, on a good day, they're, they're, they're swerving all over the place. And so there's some people that shouldn't, shouldn't be, but, but you did. And, you know, it would have been easy just to say, nope, 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 not happening. But you made it. And, you know, hey, you know, thanks for that. But to be in this, this system of, of discipleship. So the, the genuine disciple, it's a, uh, beginning with this Sunday, a three part series on, on John 15, and a lot of you, you, you know some of John 15, and so let's kind of get into it this morning. Uh, I'll talk about, first of all, called the setting. The setting of John 15, and Jesus lays this out. He says, uh, I am the true vine, and, and my Father is the vine dresser. And so first of all, he says, this, this is how this whole discipleship thing works here in John 15. These are the, the characters so far. And so you understand who I am. I'm, I'm not just the vine. I am the, the true vine. In John, there's, there's seven I am's. Jesus says, well, I am, I am the, the bread of life. 
He says, I am, the, I am the light of the world. And he goes on. And this is the seventh and final of all those I am. So he, he sets himself apart from every, everyone else or everything else. And so there could have been like other supposed vines, not, not true vines, but vines wanting you to believe that they are, are the way. But he says, I, I'm really the one. And if, if you look even uh, in, in the Old Testament that, that Israel saw or was supposed to be like the true vine, but they turned their back on God, so no longer are are they the vine. Now it is it is Jesus Christ. So he says, "Listen, I need you, need you to know that I am taking the place of, of Israel and that old system that's there. Something new has come. It's me. I am God. This is who I am. So now it's not Israel. It's me. I am the true vine. That's a, a huge shift in everyone's thinking uh, back then. So he distinguishes himself from." Israel and all other uh, ways of thinking or individuals claiming that I I am the way to God. And by the way, my my heavenly Father is the vine dresser. A vine dresser takes care of the vine, takes care we'll see of the branches, takes care of the entire vineyard. He's like the gardener. He's the overseer. So if you don't like the way things are, uh, look look toward the vine dresser. Look to our heavenly Father. And so this, this is what's going on here. This is, you need to understand this first before everything else. The Heavenly Father, He, He protects the vineyard. He protects the vine. He, uh, He deals with the branches appropriately. And some of that's a bit disturbing as we'll see a little later this morning. So the, the second part, first is the second, the second part now, there are the branches. Now, people, but, but not everyone, but let me talk about branches. Every every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Hmm. Okay. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. Now, at this point, you may think, I don't think I want to be a branch. Because either way, either he, he takes me away or he he prunes me. And you know what pruning is? Pruning is like cutting. I don't know a lot about plants and these things, but I know enough that if you want a plant to grow healthier and larger and to bear more fruit, you have to go into a pruning process. Hopefully you know what you're doing. You're not just slipping away with anything, but in order for it to be healthier. But to prune is not pleasant. Another word for pruning is cleaning or cleansing. It's not pleasant. It looks like you're doing damage. You know, it, it doesn't feel good in a life. Uh, no plant or no person wants to say, prune me. When's the last time you prayed to God, Lord, prune me? That's the last thing you want. You, want, you may want to bear fruit, but you don't, you don't want the pruning. You want the fruit without the pruning. It doesn't work very well like that. So that's what, what, what the Father, one thing He's about. Uh, so there's two kinds of branches here. There's a branch that bears fruit. There's a branch that doesn't bear fruit. And I want to say this, both branches are of the religious variety. It's not that one branch is worldly or that one branch is atheistic. It's, it's not that both branches have a religious uh, way of, of, of life. They, they're at least going through the motions. They know something uh, about God, something of the scriptures or, or uh, the knowledge of God during, during that time. And so here, you got the Father, you have, who's the vine dresser, you have Christ, who is, who is the vine, and you have branches who are, I want to say, are, are religious people. That's all who, I don't want to call them the players, but that's all who is involved here in John 15. But here is the issue that, that Christ is really getting at. So you understand what's going on here. But this is the issue. The issue is the fruit. The fruit is, is always the issue because everyone's life produces something. You know that. Some people's lives produce upset. Do you know of some people that their life, it, it always seems that they're, they're connected and closely connected and seem to be producing what we call drama? You may know people like that. 
Of course, you're not like that, right? No one's here like that. But we know people like that. And you call it the drama queen, the drama king, the drama whatever. But they're always, there's always this controversy going on. Like they're always upset with something or someone's always upset with them. And they don't know how to bring peace to it. They know how to escalate it. Uh, and so that's what their life produces. Their life produces discord and stress and strife. And there's, there's always tension. Uh, that's some folks. That's I don't want to call it fruit, but every life produces something. Every life. When you walk into the room, I want to tell you something. Everyone has some kind of reaction when they know you're there. So even, even this morning, well, yeah, when folks saw you, they had some reaction to your presence. Why? Because you have impact. You might think, me? Even me? Did anyone even notice me? Oh, yeah, they did. Everyone that I see has some impact on me. Everyone who sees me, I have some impact on them. The impact's not always the same, right? It's not. Some people react different, but there's always an impact. Of course, the question is, what, what is my normal impact on people? Or how do I normally per- perceive people? It could be them, or it could be how you perceive them, but there's always impact. Likewise, there, there's, there should be th- this thing called fruit. Fruit, fruit always has impact of some kind. Uh, and I'm going to go, well, well, what is it? What, what is this fruit? Because it's the issue here in the first part of John 15. Well, uh, the fruit is the issue because it reveals what kind of branch you are. I would say, at the very least, we are all, we are all religious people. Uh, obviously, you're, you're all church-going folks. At least this morning you are. And so we're not sitting there... Uh, bad mouthing God. We're not, about, you know, telling people not not to go to church. Church is a sham. It's all full of hypocrites and you know all on all. We're, we're not doing that. We're we're a part of it. Right? We're, we are here this morning. So the issue is, well, what kind of a branch am I? You know, we want to wish the best, but truly, what kind of what kind of branch am I? There are religious people who attend church who don't bear fruit, you know some. You do. You, you know, we all know some. No one thinks it's them. It's always someone else, but we know some. Listen, God's people are not called just to be faithful. You may have been told that. It's, it's not quite true. We're called to be faithful and fruitful. To be producing, if you have faith, let me tell you, you will produce fruit. Faith isn't just just believing certain things. That's a part of it. But if you truly have biblical faith, you will produce fruit. So God has called us to produce fruit. Every single, that's a part of obedience. Well, here's a couple things of, uh, that, that speaks of, of fruit. Uh, number one, for the fruit of, of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So there's there's the fruit. It, it, it consists the, these are the things about fruit. It's, it's good. It's righteous. It, it, it's truthful. Uh, Colossians speaks of bearing fruit in in every good work. And then there's the fruit of the spirit. Nine characteristics of of the fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit is love and joy and in in peace, patience, kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness. Here's a good one. Self-control. Self-control. Last night, I think I lost a little self-control. I may have told you a few weeks ago, we got this puppy, right? Got this puppy. And, and uh, I, I, put it, I put it in its cage. I don't know, about 11 o'clock or so before I went to bed. And it's been doing pretty good. About 1 o'clock, 1.30. Yip, 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 yip. And I'm thinking, uh, it'll shut up. But oh no. It, you know, it, it just continues. And then I think, and they go, how long can it do this? Because it was like, it was gaining intensity. You know, the volume was increasing. I, I think the siding was shaken uh, on the house. And it just keeps going and going. It's, like it's working itself up into a frenzy. So... I had to get up and 
say a few words to, to the dog, uh, pound around a little bit, and I thought that'll take care of that. So I go back, right? And it's about 30 minutes later, it starts back up again. Well, I just want to tell you, the dog's doing okay. But, <laughs> but there was this, this thing that kicked in. Doesn't it know? Doesn't it know that tomorrow morning I need to go and do what I'm doing right now? And obviously it either it didn't know or didn't care. And so it just, just keeps, keeps on yelping. I thought, you know what? We, were, we all, almost were puppyless last night. Uh, you know, out where we live, you can do all kinds of things. You can dig a hole. No one will ever know. You know, there, there you go. What happened to your dog, Rick? I don't know. I don't know. It's here. It's gone. Who knows? Who knows? Don't look around. Just, just keep on. Just keep on going. So there's that self-control thing. But some of you, it's not with puppies. It's with people, right? And we tend to lose our self-control. When we lose our self-control, normally our volume increases. Normally that, the, that vocabulary that's set over here has just come in to play. And the things that, well, I shouldn't say that. We're just saying it. And the hand gestures, you know, kick in and we get very all animated. And it's like, oh, when, when, when self-control is, is lacking, I'll tell you what's not happening. What is not happening is love. The dog last night didn't think that Rick is loving me. It didn't think that. I did not come across in, in an, an attitude of joy. I was not happy with this. There wasn't peace. There is turmoil, right? There's an incredible lack of patience because when I need my sleep, you know, people better cooperate. Uh, and, you know, and on, on, and on it goes. So whenever this last one goes, they all go. And it's a, each one impacts the other one. And so, but this is the fruit. You know, part of it is how do you handle Things, situations, sometimes individuals that, that tend to irritate you. You know, what, what's your MO? What, what happens? How do you, well, normally, and it's not, you gotta be careful, but normally I'm okay, it's just this, you have to watch that, that 10%, but some people it's not 10%, it's 90%. You know, sometimes they say that so and so is temperamental. You know what temperamental means normally? It means that they're, 90% temp, temper and 10% mental. That's normally what temperamental means. So they all impact each other. Normally when one's gone, they're all gone. So you can't say, well, you know, I'm a really loving person with lots of joy and peace. I just don't have patience. No. See, when patience is gone, your love and your joy and your peace are also gone, aren't they? You, you know when you become impatient, when you don't know how to wait well, because that's what patience is. It's learning how to wait well. And I don't even want to ask for hands. How many people here wait well? I don't even want to know. I don't want to know, right? We had trouble with these chairs. See, you didn't know this. All week, people are, are the chairs coming? Well, you know, they got shipped out of Mrs. Where are they at? Well, I don't know. You know, all this... When are they going to be here? Well, we don't know. We want them here in the first part of the week so we can work out. No, no. They come Friday afternoon. They all know how to be unpacked and all the plastic and the backs put on and, you know, and all, and all, and we're sitting there going, just, are they going to, are people going to have something to sit on come Sunday? Or, or what? And so, this patience thing is huge. Waiting well, can I just say this? Waiting well is one of the most important things to learn in all of life. They don't teach you that in school, do you? I don't think so. They teach you all, a lot, of, a lot of things, but they don't teach you patience. It's one of the most important things. If you're ever going to have love, if you're going to have, if you're ever going to have joy, because when patience is gone, you know your joy is out the window. And a whole other set of emotions kick in that you don't want. And you're all worked up and all these things. Peace is gone. You're not kind anymore. No one's going to call you good. How gentle are you? Gentle? Man, I'd become violent, you know? I, I go to war when patience goes. And we understand that. So this fruit thing is huge. Because all, they're all connected together. Let, let me try to summarize 
what I, what I think this fruit is. This is my definite. Fruit is doing good all the time to everyone. Get that? To everyone? No, I'm, I'm, I am doing good. I am kind. I am loving to most people. But this person? Oh, no. No. That's, that's not happening. Uh, everyone, when not, not in the easy times... Do you know how, how easy it is to be nice to everyone this morning? It's so easy. Isn't, isn't it easy? Why? It's, hey, how you doing? You know, keep on going. You know, we, 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 we say hi. We're kind. They don't hang around. You know, they're gone. We don't see them. Maybe it's the next week. And so it's just easy. If you can't be kind to everyone on a Sunday morning in church, I don't, I don't know what else is going on. It's easy. But no, no. All the time to everyone. That's the fruit. Why? Because God in his goodness is in us. We're just working it out. Try to take those exceptions away because normally those exceptions is where God wants you to excel. Here again, don't just be good at loving those who love you. See, God says, that's easy. You don't need me to do it. You don't need fruit to do that. That's easy. But well, what's going to take God is the all the time to everyone. But, but, if or since his goodness is in us, you can do it. You can do it. So this fruit is huge. So here's the question. How, how do I get it? How do I get this fruit? That's, that's the important thing. If it's so important, how, how do I attain this fruit? Here's the issue. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch can't bear fruit of itself. You can't do it by yourself. This is not a try harder issue. You can't pull this thing off. Uh, a lot, a lot of folks, is, they're in the try harder, and if try harder doesn't get it, they don't know how. They don't know how to get it. If try harder won't. This is not a try harder. Now, this is not uh, one of these uh, just go about your life and it just naturally happens. It's not that, that either. As the branch can't bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. So it's this abiding. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears more fruit. For apart from me, you can't do anything. You, you, you can't do anything or you can't do anything good. You can't begin to pull this off, that I'm, what I'm talking about. Oh, you can be carnal. Well, sure you can. We're not talking about that. We're not even, we're not even talking about being good. We're talking about being fruit bearing. And so, so in some of your translations, this word abide, it, it says remain. You, you remain in me. And, but, but, but God says, or Jesus says, look, abide in me, remain in me, because I am in you. If, if he is abiding or remaining in us, he says, look, if I'm that in you, you can be that in me. You, you can do this. You can pull that off. It's a two-way street. I think Jesus is saying, he's saying, I have done everything that I can for you so that you abide in me. See, I'm abiding in you. And that's, and that's critical. And so, and so, since I am, you can. Since I abide in you, you can abide in me. And one says, he's, I'm doing everything I can to always abide in you. You just need to be reciprocal. You just need to abide in me. See, it works both ways. See, sometimes in Christianity, we just say, oh, that's just too hard. I, I can't do that. I, I don't have that gift. That's not who I am. Well, I think you have to go to school to learn, to learn that. No, that's, that's too hard for me. In fact, that's impossible. See, the minute you start going on that, of course it's not going to happen. If, if, if Jesus is saying, you abide in me and I'll abide in you, and then you say, uh, that, that's too hard. I, I can't, you don't know who I am. 
Maybe that works for a select few, or maybe you have to be clergy or elders, but I, I can't do that. You've just talked yourself out of it. You just talk yourself out of obedience. You just talk yourself out of it. Well, of course you can. Really, I think it's the, the encouraging thing, thing here is Jesus says, look, I abide in you. Because I do, you can abide in me. It, it shouldn't be that hard. Christianity, really, it's not that hard. It's not as hard as you think it is. I think we make it harder than it really is. Let me just say this too. You know that life is hard. Life can be hard. Can I just want to say this? This may bounce off, or you may not believe me. Can I just say it's not that hard, or it's it's not as hard as we think it is. It's not as hard as we make it out to be. But sometimes it is hard. I got a call Friday night, about 8.30, 8.45. Man in the church calls me up, says, uh, I thought I just wanted to tell you that my wife just passed away a few minutes ago. That's hard. That's hard. We all get that. That's, that's tough. Um, Please don't hear me saying life is never hard. How hard will that be for him? My guess, the rest of his life, right? You, you, you don't get over that. So there is a sense that sure it is. Uh, he can get on the, on the solution side. And hopefully it won't be as hard a year from now or two years than it is right now. But it never completely goes away. So, you know, I'm not saying that, but often we make it harder. Listen, life, life goes smoother when you're bearing fruit. Life goes smoother with the hard stuff when, when the fruit is, is manifest in you. You want to live life well, be a fruit bearer. In, in spite of, of these difficult things, that, that I'll continue to be fruitful. Uh, I believe that in every single Christ follower, there, there, every disciple, there is a hunger and a thirst for God. In the things of God. I, I believe that. And I believe that's the way it, it ought to be because there's never we never have never have enough of God. We never experience enough of God. There's so much more. We never know enough about God. He's still in so many ways mysterious, right? We were told when we were really young, if you went to church or had Christian parents, you were told that Jesus loves you, and that's absolutely right. But here here you are as adults, and we still don't don't have our arms wrapped around that. We still believe it. We haven't got it all figured out. We're still so glad for it. But why? What's that all about? We just know that he does. There's also an incredible, uh, a, a incredible hunger and thirst to be loving people who, who live in joy. Whatever is going on, that I still possess joy. And, and you know what? I still have this peace. Even, even when people pass away. And even as I get older and, and things start to break down and joints start to cramp up and you feel like the, the Tin Man of the Wizard of Oz that needs a lot of oil, you, you know, e- even then, you can still maintain joy and, and peace and, and those things. So, uh, in, in the abiding, G- Jesus says this as well. He says, just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Or live in my love. Stay in my love. Stay right there, right in the center of my love. Don't, please don't move outside of, of my love. Or do things that compromise and joy in, you know, my love. See, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Uh, to abide or to remain really 
which results in spiritual fruit is not just about being born again, not just about learning more biblical data. Those are good things, but it's keeping or obeying his commandments. If you keep my commandments, see, abiding is a keeping his commandments. If you keep my commandments, which ones? All of them. If you keep my commandments, then you abide in my love. Then you remain in my love. So keeping my commandments, that's critical here. You get outside of that where, where you know you're not, you're not doing that. That's where you compromise your abiding or your remaining. So it's so key. If you want to live in fruit, if you want to produce fruit, if you want to have biblical impact on people, you live in the middle of the commandments. And not that we always do them all the time. Of course we don't. But we're getting traction. We're making improvement. We know we're, we're slowly, gradually, but, but we're getting there. I'm not the same person I was a year ago or 10 years ago. I'm becoming more like Christ. And, and, and people can see that. I can see it. I can feel it. I see the fruit. I feel the fruit. And the fruit is impacting others. So it's not just trying to do the commandments. It's doing the commandments. Big difference. It's not that, well, I'm trying. I'm not, it's not I'm trying. No, it's, it's going from trying to doing. That's where the fruit is found. Or, or the lack of fruit if you don't. See, whenever, uh, whenever or wherever there's a lack or a compromise in obedience, there's a lack or compromise in fruit production. Now, in this passing, there is a very sobering thought. It's not a nice thought. It's a, it can be a confusing thought, but it's an important thought. And he addresses those who don't. Because not everyone does. Not all religious, not just use. In this era, not all church people do. They don't all abide. And for those that don't, let this be either an encouragement or however you want to look at it. But if anyone does not abide, this gets serious. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch. Who does this? Vine dresser, God the Father. Thrown away. Yeah. Thrown away as a branch and, and dries up. And they, they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Huh. That's pretty serious. Uh, and I, I can't get into all of what goes into this. It's, it's not that I think someone loses their salvation. It's I think that they never had salvation. And, and the way you tell with, if someone is in Christ or not is they, they produce fruit. They don't just go through the exercises. They just don't show up and have a good attendance. Although I go... I don't make light of that. I think those things are incredibly important. But they go farther than just that. They're not just spectators when it comes to Christianity. Because this is, this is serious. This is eternal. This, this is final. There's not a second chance. Once they're cut off, it's done. Now, whether God cuts them off in this life, or maybe we're talking at death, but they are cut off. And, and okay, just serious stuff. They, what it means, they were never really genuine disciples. What I think it means, that they were never really Christians, although you thought they would have been. Because they went, they went through re, 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 the religious stuff. And this is their horrid eternal destination. You say, well, why, why is fruit so important? Well, part of it's this, but it's more than just that. There's also benefits to fruit. Here it is. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You want to glorify God, and we'd all say, well, yeah. Is there anything more important than glorifying God? The answer is no. No. Nothing. Hey, get good grades in school, right? Get good grades in school. But more important than that 
is you glorify God. Hey, hey, you know, raise your family well. But more important than that is you glorify God. Well, maybe an aspect of glorifying God is getting good grades. Maybe an aspect of glorifying God is raising your family, okay? We're not saying that this is unimportant. We're not saying that. But make glorifying God more important than this, then I think you will do that. Bear, that you bear not a little, you bear a lot. And in that, you prove to be my disciples. There's nothing more important than this. Uh, that fruit overflows. If you want to prove you're a disciple of Christ, it's not by what you've done in the past, it's what's happening right now. That there is fruit production and I'm, I am closely connected. I'm, I am living in the love, abiding in the love of God. I am keeping all the commandments that I know of and doing my best. I'm getting traction here. And therefore, there is fruit coming up. This glorifies God. This proves to me, to other people, that I, that I am actually a disciple. More, more than I would say than, than, than a Christian because God never said to make Christians. He said to make disciples. And living in that because it, it glorifies our, our Heavenly Father. Nothing more important than that. If you don't produce fruit, you don't glorify God. You don't produce a disciple. If you do, oh, God's glorified. God is lifted up. He's made large. He's, he's respected. It means that He is everything and also says, you know what? They are a disciple of God. They are a disciple of mine. That, that means everything. So, that's just the first part, section one, of John 15. And next week, if you can make it, you know, please be here. We'll just continue on. You know, go ahead and read that chapter if you want to over and over and over again. Uh, it's, it's huge. So, so with that, as I close, uh, just pray with me. Lord, thank you this morning that you abide in us so we can abide in you. We can live in, in your love and we can uh, be obedient to your commandments. We will show the fruit that's so incredible. It's what the world really wants. It just doesn't know how to get it. So may we show the way. May we help one another. May we have positive biblical impact on each other, on everyone we meet. That's your will for us. Uh, we ask you to do this in, in Christ's name. Amen.